The New York Giants just got great news for their week two matchup against the Washington Commanders. You're watching Giants Now by Chat Sports. I am your host, Marshall Green. Before we dive into today's video, make sure you are subscribed to the channel. It's my off day this week, not at the studio today, but still wanted to get you guys this video out there because we've got some major news to talk about. If you love the Giants and you want free, informative, entertaining updates, no matter where we are, no matter what we're doing, smash that sub button and let's pick up more subscribers this week than the Washington Commanders Report channel here by Chat Sports. Jack Sperry, their host, has been talking a lot of noise. I want to take him down. If you love the Giants, you want to beat the Commanders, you want to get to one and one, hit that sub button. All righty, yesterday on the injury report, Malik Neighbors popped up with a knee injury, and a lot of people were saying that maybe this is bad news for the New York Giants. Connor Hughes of SNY reported yesterday that the injury happened at practice. He said Neighbors didn't look all that good, and a lot of people worried. And we did a video about it, and I told you guys, I'm not going to freak out until I see Malik Neighbors on the Friday injury report and whatever his designation may be. If he's questionable, then we can freak out. But you know what? We woke up to finally some good news as New York Giants fans. And it seems like Malik Neighbors is okay. And he is going to play this Sunday against the Washington Commanders. Brian Dable said he has no concern about wide receiver Malik Neighbors. Dable said Neighbors reported his knee didn't feel right during practice yesterday. So they played it safe. But Dable expects Neighbors to practice fully today and play on Sunday. Brian Dable said Malik Neighbors is good and he'll be ready to play on Sunday. There is no concern for Malik Neighbors. And that's about the best news that a New York Giant fan could have got here early on a Friday morning. And let's just show our guy Malik Neighbors some love. Type those ones down in the comment section. Show him some love. Hopefully this will be the first week he scores his first touchdown in a long, long, awesome career for the New York football Giants. Look, this could be a major week, not just for Malik Neighbors, but also the passing offense for the New York Giants. The Washington Commanders secondary was the worst in the National Football League in week one. Listen to this. The Commanders coverage grade on PFF last week was 37 and a half. That was last in the NFL. The second to last team got a 46.8 grade. That's a difference in 10 points. That's a major difference on the pro football focus scale. If there was ever a week for the Giants to bounce back on offense, really turn that fan base around and implement some life and some hope into this football team. It'll be this week against the Commanders as Daniel Jones has had more success against the Commanders than he has any other team in the NFL. Daniel Jones has beat two teams of the other 31 teams more than once. The Philadelphia Eagles, he's beat them twice. And the Washington Commanders, he has beat them five times. He is 5-1-1 one, one in his career against Washington. So by far, he has had the most success in the win-loss column against the Commanders. And the Giants, they need that to happen. Since the start of the 2023 season, no cornerback has allowed more receiving yards than Washington Commander Benjamin St. Juice. The Giants need to attack him. Also, Emmanuel Forbes just had surgery, I believe, the second-year corner for the Commanders. Sounds like he's not going to play this week, so they're already having to go deeper into their depth chart to find somebody to play. And look, after week one, the Commanders, they got lit up. The Commanders allowed 139 receiving yards to wide receivers and tight ends operating out of the slot position. Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, and Jalen McMillan all caught their touchdowns last week operating out of the slot. The players that operate out of the slot the most for the New York Giants, Wandale Robinson, he was there 78.3% of the time in week one. Malik Neighbors was there 17.6% of the time. Somewhat of a surprise, Darius Slayton was there 28.6% of the time, and Theo Johnson 407 Wandale Robinson could be in it for a big game, but I want to see the Giants, and Brian Dable, as he is now the play caller for this football team, be more colorful, be more creative, be smarter and make it easier on your quarterback to get the ball to Malik Neighbors. Because if this offense is going to be explosive, if this offense wants to score points, they have to do a better job of getting Malik Neighbors the football. He was rarely in motion in week one. You watch the Vikings and Justin Jefferson's here. He's moving around all over the formation. He's operating in the slot. He's outside. He's in the backfield. He's everywhere. I want Brian Dable to do that with Malik Neighbors. 17.6% of his snaps coming in the slot is a little bit lower of a number than I would appreciate it. As a quarterback, the easiest player to throw the ball to is your tight end 
and the slot. It's the closest to you, and more often than not, you're going to have a matchup that favors the offense, whether that be a linebacker, a safety, or a nickel corner guarding your best player, Malik Neighbors. More often than not, he is going to win that matchup. The Giants have to do a better job of getting Neighbors the football. Good things happen when you get him the ball. I can promise you he's going to make plays as long as he gets the chance. He's going up against his buddy, Jaden Daniels, his LSU Tiger teammate. He wants to show him, as I'm sure they've been talking a lot of noise, and they had that rookie of the year bet that got waved off, that he's going to have a big game. And he should. This commander's defense is not all that good, especially on the back half. They're good against the run, not against the pass. You need to go out and do it. We have more updates on Darius Slayton and the rest of the New York football giants. But first, I got to give a major shout out to today's sponsor, Game Time. If you're looking for last minute tickets to go watch the Giants versus Commanders game, or maybe there's a concert you want to go to here coming up pretty soon, or maybe you just want to go see, catch the Yankees or the Mets before the summer is over, do it with Game Time. Download the Game Time app and use the promo code chat sports and get $20 off your first purchase where terms do apply. Make sure you use two of their awesome features, the all-in pricing feature. That way, the price that you see is the price that you pay. Nobody likes all the hidden fees that a lot of ticketing apps hit you with when you get to check out. Game time, they give you the option to see the all-in pricing when looking at tickets. Make sure you take advantage of that, as well as the game time picks feature, which is brand new. It pretty much simplifies your feed. That way, you only see games, tickets to concerts, theater events to the people and teams you want to see the most. It isolates your feed in a way that way you only see who is your favorite teams and it makes it that much easier to go see your favorite teams. So make sure you are hooked up with them. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use the promo code chat sports, C-H-A-T-S-P-O-R-T-S and get $20 off your first purchase where terms do apply. When it comes to Darius Slayton as he left the game, or didn't leave the game. After the game, an injury popped up. It was a concussion. He's been in concussion protocol all week. He's still in concussion protocol. And at practice on Friday, he was in a red jersey. Um, I think that Slayton has a chance to play. But it's so hard to tell with these concussion injuries. Um, I'm always on the side of take the week off. Concussions are scary. We saw what happened with Tua last night. That's the one injury I don't think you push. That's the one injury I don't think you play with if you're dealing with any symptoms. Um, I'm hoping Darius Slayton can continue to have a speedy recovery. And if he's not able to play this week, it is sooner rather than later. He's a good football player, and he's been really good for this team for a long time. Giants need him out there. If he's not out there, I'm looking for Jalen Hyatt to step up. He had just 16 snaps in week one against the Vikings. He's your most explosive receiver. Maybe Slayton you can consider more explosive when it comes to catching the ball down the field. But that's what Hyatt does. That's why the Giants traded up for him in the third round. That's why he was looked at as a top receiver in college football, and I believe he won the Bolitnikoff. you got to throw him the ball, and if Slayton's not out there, you need someone to push the field besides the neighbors, and I think that could be number 13, Jalen Hyatt. Some other injury news um, to look at is Nick McLeod. He's dealing with a knee injury. I'm not sure he's going to play. Some people are saying day-to-day. Some people are saying week-to-week. As we know, the Giants are always very thorough and forward in their injury reports as always but with Nick McLeod out the Giants are treating Cordell Flott as a versatile outside slot corner right now because the injury to Nick just as Drew Phillips returns from an Achilles injury before week one explains his limitations so Drew Phillips had a little bit of an injury that we did not know about I want to see more of him I thought he played well in week one he looked sticky in coverage he was aggressive in the run game forced that fumble on CJ Ham. and look let's let the young guys play let's see what they got let's see how they continue to develop I'm going to scroll my timeline right here and see if I see anything else. Coach Dable on Malik Neighbors says he's good. That's awesome. Dable says Neighbors noted something with his knee didn't feel right, so the Giants backed off him yesterday but said he's fine. Darius Slayton still in concussion protocol. Dable teams with one – some interesting stuff here. We'll just go through this. Dable said teams with one-plus turnover in week one were 10-1 and with more explosive plays – Okay, teams with plus turnovers. So the teams that won the turnover battle in week one were 10-1. and one. And the teams with more explosive plays were 11-3. and three. Who would have thunk it? You take care of the ball and you create explosive plays. You're going to win the football game. Uh, McLeod and Musau will not practice today. Darius Musau, the rookie inside linebacker, played the majority of the snaps. I think we're going to see Mike McFadden out there a little bit more this week 
uh, considering he did not play at all and he wasn't on the injury report. That was weird. Um, Dayball Banks keeps improving as a second-year player, going against another good player this week. A couple times last year, McCorn and Banks battled. Uh, that'll be a good test for Deontay this week. Um, let me see if I see anything else. Graham Gano revenge game. Yeah, he used to play for the Commanders. Um, man, I bet you win a football game. What about Daniel Jones coming out and saying, I can't wait to play. Can't wait to play well and win the game. How about you go do it? Go play well, win the game, have the media back off you a little bit. You can keep that focus inside the building and get ready for week three against the Browns. News of the day, though, Malik Neighbors is okay. He's going to play Sunday and hopefully he has a big performance. That's why you subscribe. If you made it this far in the video, hit that thumbs up icon and we'll see you tomorrow. Let's go Big Blue.